Hey, what's up everybody? It's Saturday, July 10th. Who you got tonight in the fights? I got Dustin Poirier over Conor McGregor, and I got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson by decision over Gilbert Burns. All right. I want to answer a question that somebody posed here saying, Mike, why is it when the banks get more deposits, you know, they're not lending out as much money? What happens? Do they become more cautious? Do they just hold on to the money? What is it? No, the answer is it's not that the banks become more cautious and it's not that they don't want to make more loans. Obviously, loans are very important assets for banks. It's, you know, the primary way they earn money and earnings eventually flow to capital. So it's really, really important to make loans. The problem is the banks are under certain regulatory constraints. One of those being the supplemental leverage ratio. And the way that ratio is calculated is it's uh, the bank capital, tier one capital, divided by consolidated assets. And it's that denominator part, the asset part, which becomes a problem when more deposits arrive at the bank because deposits are both assets and liabilities but it's the asset component of deposits that cause that denominator to get bigger and that shrinks the leverage ratio all right think about it if you have ten dollars in capital and you have a hundred dollars in uh, assets your leverage ratio is uh, um, 0.1, 10%, right? And if you have, now if that denominator goes up to 200, so you have 100 divided by 200, then what is it? It's 0 0.05, it has shrunk. And that ratio has to be equal to 3% or greater. All right, so to use the same example, let's say you have $3 in capital, and you have $100 in um, uh, assets, that comes to your 3%. Now, if you get another $100 in deposits, right, that shrinks down, all right? So you're below the regulatory ratio. And this is why when we've seen this, you know, extreme buildup of reserves in the banking system, it has constrained the ability of banks to make loans. It's not that they don't want to make loans. They just, you know, they're getting closer to the threshold of that ratio where they can't increase their assets and loans are assets, all right? They either can't increase them at all or they could just increase them at a slower rate, okay, not add as many loans, or they also have the option of adding more capital. In many cases, that is uh, dilutive of their shares. You know, they could sell shares and raise more capital that way. There's other ways they can go about raising capital. But as that denominator gets bigger, as the amount of assets that the bank has on its books gets bigger, the ratio shrinks, you know, all else equal, unless of course, that, like I said, they raise more capital. So that is why the lending has slowed down. And what I pointed out in my last video was in the week ending June 30th, you know, the week before last week, we saw a big drop in deposits and reserves and that was due to the Fed's uh, reverse repo operations. I believe it was 250 billion down in one week, a draining of those reserves. That was a record one week drain. And that kind of freed up space on, on the bank's balance sheet to add more loans. And we saw a very significant increase in lending in that week up by 20, I think it was 20.6 billion. That was the biggest increase in four months. So the banks got some relief from that reserve drain 
okay? And then they were, you know, right there, ready to lend. So it's not that they don't want to lend, it's not that they're uh, cautious necessarily, it's just that they are constrained by uh, regulatory guidelines that they have to follow. So a lot of this is kind of being exacerbated by, you know, the Fed continues to buy 120 billion of assets every month. That's adding 120 billion a month in reserves to bank balance sheets. The Treasury is spending down its account, you know, to, to pay bills without um, the offsetting issuance of Treasury securities or at a slower pace. So, you know, Treasury securities are a reserve drain. That's why the government sells securities. It's not borrowing, it's necessary to maintain the level of reserves in the banking system, you know, so it stays consistent with the Fed's um, policy rate. And also so that, you know, it allows the banks to function under the regulatory rules that are in existence. So a lot of this is kind of, you know, uh, self-made the problems, if, if I could put it that way. But yeah, that's the reason. I mean, the banks are definitely in a good position to lend. Uh, if these, you know, reserve problems were not happening right now, eventually, you know, this stuff is gonna, is gonna end um, and we'll get back to kind of a normal situation. But in the meantime, that's what's been going on and that is the explanation. So I hope that helps. Anyway, enjoy your Saturday, enjoy the fights. See you tomorrow, bye-bye.